Good morning. We are starting our first full day up here in northern Washington, out on the peninsula, going to the rainforest. This is so different than our normal desert Utah adventures, so pretty exciting. Looks like we have some rain moving in, which kind of makes sense for a rainforest, so should be kind of cool. We are on the road to the Ho Rainforest, and we just passed a sign saying that expect almost two hour waits. We're six miles out, and we're stuck here because the parking lot's full, so as one car leaves, another one gets to come in, and I think that means, I don't know, but that could mean there's six miles of cars in front of us. And a lot of people behind us are bailing out, but we don't have that option. So I guess we're stuck here waiting to see. Besides that, we've been in traffic the entire time here. <laughs> yeah. I guess we should have researched a little bit better. I just seen pictures and thought, we need to go see that. And on a Tuesday, it shouldn't be that busy, but I was wrong. What is going on in there? Why? What is taking so long? I wasted all day here for you. Just past the sign for the 45 minute wait. The problem is we're pretty committed at this point. So I think we're just sitting here. There was a tiny little pullout that maybe I could have backed into and got flipped around, but it would have been tight. But after waiting an hour plus, and now we only have 45 minutes, it's kind of like, well, we've committed. So we're just gonna sit here for longer. I can see the pay station ahead, so that's hopeful. Yeah. I'm hoping that they also have specific RV parking and there's not very many in there. <laughs> if not, then we might be waiting a little while to park the truck and trailer. 15 minutes and counting down. Well, after two hours in line, uh, we are finally in the park, going towards, uh... Oof, bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I was saying, so, in the park, trying to get parked. Bumpy. Supposedly there's a trailer area, so, uh, hopefully there's no, uh, waiting around for a trailer parking spot. But, uh, so far, uh, it's gorgeous in here. Uh, these big, huge, old, mossy, mossy trees, uh, thick, dense, it's beautiful. Finally parked, now it's time to go see this rainforest. Just grabbing some jackets, just in case. Well, pitter-patter, pitter-patter. <laughs> What trail are we on? Hall of the Mosses. Kind of makes sense, right? Okay. Don't even know how to explain how big these trees are. Look. They have to be 200 plus feet. Yeah.
Don't know if you can see that. That one's split into two. Pretty dang cool. But then just below it, out of this rotted one, you have one, two, three, four, a whole bunch growing up out of it. Wow. <laughs> I keep finding myself just staring up and tripping. So I need to watch where I'm going, but so many cool things to see. Oh, as I trip again. So to give you some perspective, that's at least four foot diameter, and it's one of the small ones. How long was that one, Kara? 190 feet long. Jeez. That's, but the hunk, but this huge trunk is only proportioned to the original standing trees average is 220 feet and can grow over 300. Oh, oh that's pretty dang big and that didn't even have the top of the tree it hadn't even tapered yet that's huge Three, almost four o'clock. It's time for lunch. Slash dinner. Slash dinner, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> so, just gonna hurry and cook up a few little sandwiches here. Loving this back kitchenette for that. Works out pretty easy. Well, we were able to do one trail. We're having lunch, and it's 3.15. That two hours sitting in line kind of killed it today. Um, I don't think we have enough time for another trail. We don't have a place reserved yet even to stay tonight. So we probably have another two hours to get back out and find, based on what I'm seeing on my up-to-date 2012 Atlas, we probably have to bail out on it and figure out where we're gonna stay tonight. Hopefully get over on the coast somewhere. Kara said something about a Ruby beach or something like that. I don't know. Uh, we don't have any cell service up here to be researching or trying to reserve anything either. So probably be best to finish up our sandwiches and hit the road. Really wish we could have spent more time. If we were to come do this again, we'd make reservations at the campground, spend a few days. We for sure would arrive here way earlier. You can't show up here at noon and hope to get in. All right, we would have been here at, at noon, but we sat there for two hours. So just one of those things, live and learn. So time to finish the sandwiches and get back on the road. I don't know if you can see that, but our pilot car, his little guy on his electric mountain bike, it's a heck of a workout for the day. I don't know if anything went as planned today. We were hoping to get to the park a lot earlier. We fought construction the whole way, then the wait to the park. And then after we got out of the park, we sat in construction for another hour plus. We were lucky we found this park that we're at now is the Hoquiam River RV park. We we're kind of trying to avoid RV parks, but this one's pretty nice and they could get us in. Everywhere else we were trying, all the state parks were already full because it was later, you know how it goes. And it was actually just as cheap as the state parks are, so that's nice. So we're gonna get dinner going, go walk the river, all that sort of stuff. I think we're doing fajitas tonight on the Blackstone. So, I don't know. Comment below. Have you ever had one of those days where nothing went right? You didn't make it as far as you were trying to, all that sort of stuff, and let us know how it was for you. But a, a bad day on the road is still better than a good day at work sometimes. So, Kara, after spending some time in the bean now, 
how is using this kitchen compared to more of the traditional kitchen in like our fifth wheel? Well, this is definitely a minimal kitchen. <laughs> uh, I don't have every tool that I need, but I'm getting by. Like I'm learning. I, I honestly only use like one knife, so I don't need a ton of knives. Um, however, we did need steak knives the other night. Yeah, we didn't have, <laughs> last night we didn't have steak knives. So had to cut it all up and then put it on the plates, but it worked. Um, but I mean, other than that, our meals are very minimal. So we're not needing a lot of kitchen stuff. Like I just have a saucepan and a skillet. That's really all I need for what we're using. It's not that bad, Fridge. right? I'm missing my fridge space. Freezer too. And freezer where I can throw in three or four meals and be set. Um, right now we're usually, we're pretty much two night meals and a little breakfast. <laughs> so that is a little bit of a drawback there. But as for um, grilling, we usually are grilling anyways. We're outside grilling. Um, I mean, we do have our little cooktop if need be, but other than the fridge and freezer, that's what I'm missing. Are you glad we got the sink? Yes. I am very glad that we have sink and water. Um, that way I'm not running to the bathroom where I'm not messing with a jug of water sitting here taking up space. Um, however, you'd have your space below. You could put your water jug, but it's just nice that got a little sink there that I can wash up and and it is being used as our storage too. <laughs> yeah, like after lunch, we just throw all the utensils and stuff throw right inside. Throw the utensils in there. I've got a, a case of soda that I'm storing in there. Or um, on the way up here, I had a loaf of bread. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good catch-all. It's a pretty good catch-all right there. So yeah, we're making them do. Definitely learning with it. All right, so I'm going to stop talking to Kara so she can finish getting dinner ready. That way we can eat because I'm hungry. Really simple mill on the Blackstone, just fajitas. And it's really cost effective as well. Just a little bit of steak, cut up some onions, green peppers, fajita mix. Yeah, nice and easy. The next day. This is day number three, I think, on our way down the Washington coast. We are getting pretty close to Astoria, about to cross into Oregon. Decided to swing into Long Beach. Uh, and see what's here. I haven't had a lot of time to spend out on these beach areas, so that's the plan for today is to spend some time out exploring a little bit. We have been driving a while coming down the Washington coast. We are about to jump in to Oregon. Uh, we decided instead of continuing down to Astoria, we are coming to Long Beach. Never been here, it's beautiful. We actually kind of made a wrong turn, which was great because we found the road coming into this beautiful beach. Of course we don't have sandals, but we're just gonna walk along here and take the drier route of it. As we were pulling off the beach, we happened to see uh, a group of people uh, surrounding a car. <laughs> uh, they have been trying to dig out this car. The car went off into a soft spot, tie centered now. It's buried to like middle of the tire. Uh, Jesse, being a good Samaritan, is uh, offering our services and his tow rope to possibly get them out of the sand. So he went to go chat with them, give you an update in just a bit. So it turns out there is no way to hook the car from the back or the front without 
uh, damaging the car. Uh, Jesse talked to a guy that was helping them and his uh, answer was... He said, well, they're from Utah, we'll give them a pass. So I, I said, well, I am too. So uh, <laughs> hooking on the front in that soft sand, there's no way. We would have been stuck too. And he says there's no place on the back to hook on to him. I'm taking his word for it, but at least we offered to help. Now let's continue on. If you guys ever get to do the coast, California, Oregon, Washington, definitely take advantage of it. It has been an amazing road trip for us. Definitely let us know. Uh, have you done a road trip on the coast? Please let us know which ones uh, you have done and share your feedback. If you are liking what you're seeing, do that like, subscribe, and as always, enjoy your weekend.